dicing within an eighth of a second for the lead here at Talladega in our live coverage. Look at that battle into turn number two and in the back straightaway. Just about even. Now Allison gets the advantage again. Labonte pulls back up on the inside, and Wallace sits in the catbird seat. The observer here enjoying this view. Young Davy Allison at 26, and you're riding with him. Here's Labonte coming back to the inside, and now Wallace looks like he wants to make it three wide. He tried to help Davy Allison the last time around, and that didn't work too good, so he decided to go down and try to help Labonte. Now he said, well, let me try Davy. Maybe he's the one that's going to make the move, and Rusty is having trouble keeping his car down on the low side of the racetrack. You see it drift up as it goes into the turn, so that's hurting him a little bit, not helping the cars in front of him. Tire situation? Could be, or maybe the back end sticking just a little bit too tight for him. Here he is, the back straight away. He comes down, gets to the bottom, is drafting off Labonte, wants to pull him through. They're going for it. Labonte in the first, Wallace in the second, Allison dropped the third. That's what you can do when two cars hook up together. Just move right around Allison. There wasn't anything you can do about it except and say, hey, let there me try that back on the inside. All right, he pulls the trigger on the bottom of the racetrack. Up on the left car. I believe that's Dalma Cowart's car down on the inside. No, that's the 67 car, Chet Phillips' car. Inches apart at 200 miles an hour in this live coverage. You're riding with Davey Allison as he rides around the Indianapolis car driver. Back to the tri-oval they come with now 11 Terry Labonte deployed in first. Rusty Wallace, winner of two events in 1986 in Winston Cup competition. And back to third is Davey Allison. When we watch a stock car race like the Michigan 400, Talladega 500, it's likely that we take the word stock for granted. But what are these 200 mile per hour stock cars? Well, last autumn, Chris Economaki visited a stock car assembly line. This factory produces lookalikes that have little in common with the cars on the showroom floor. When Detroit's assembly lines fired up after World War II, they spit out cars at an inordinate rate. And when those cars reached the end of their lives, many were resurrected from the junkyard to be racing stock cars on dusty half-mile dirt tracks like this. These dirt tracks have given way to the asphalt super speedways of today. And the cars, no longer refugees from a junkyard, but rather custom creations made, not on a Detroit assembly line, but in a handful of specialty shops like Budmore Engineering. This assembly line produces different versions of the number 15 Ricky Red Thunderbird that vary in everything from horsepower to fender flare to tread width. But unlike a Detroit assembly line, there are no conveyors or robots as each car is handcrafted. But Moore and his staff build each engine and much of the chassis, tailoring them to the differing demands of short track, medium speed, super speedway and road courses. They like the heavy duty four truck cylinder block, ideal for racing. Old blocks are first reground, taking the sheen off cylinder walls. The block is then fitted with forged aluminum, high dome racing pistons, which replace the cast aluminum, flat top pistons found in production engines. Specially forged connecting rods are used, and a high lift racing grind camshaft, along with high compression aluminum cylinder heads, provide the more than 650 horsepower needed to win races. Each piston is hand finished to the exacting tolerances needed for racing. Piston rings are filed and fitted by hand. A mistake here or anywhere in assembly could cost an engine and a race. The 16 valve seats are individually hand ground to precise tolerances. And the critical job of balancing each crankshaft also requires individual attention. This high-tech shop contains a maze of up-to-date machinery. Here, a cylinder block is line board in order to properly align the main bearings. Electronic ignition has replaced the old distributor, but because fuel injection is yet to come, the four-barrel carburetor is still standard equipment. All engine parts are carefully selected, refined, balanced, finished and fitted by hand. Because quality control is paramount, there are checks every step of the way. Once assembled, the engine is placed on this $105,000 computerized dynamometer, where its horsepower and other vital signs are checked and rated. Now asking for engine type, this is a 351 Windsor. A complete record is kept of every test for comparison and design purposes. And the car itself? 
A rolling chassis made of high tensile steel tubing includes safety roll bars, far different from that found in a family car, is bought from one of a few custom builders, and here final assembly begins. The car itself stops at the firewall. A specially designed front clip is welded on. It carries the engine, steering, front suspension, and radiator, and is easily replaceable. And there's a complete in-house sheet metal shop. Parts are handcrafted using a vast array of custom machinery that would make a weekend mechanic envious. To meet the minimum weight of 3,700 pounds, lead ballast is inserted into the rocker panels, which allows teams to locate the weight here and there according to the differing needs of each track. The gas tank is replaced with a rubberized crash-worthy fuel cell protected by a steel box and a custom paint job applied. Axles, brakes, wheels, springs, and shocks are all special, and a differential with the right gear ratio for today's track is chosen. The finished product is then rolled onto the scale where it is carefully checked against NASCAR requirements. And when all is said and done, when this car is finished and loaded for its ride to the racetrack, unlike the stock cars in the dealership, the only unmodified parts are the front bumpers, the grill work, and the header panel. Ricky Rudd's car number 15, which is struggling some here today, now being shown in 18th position. As you note, we are under caution, and it is not for a major incident. We are under, we are under caution for the third time, this for debris on the track. We've been under there for two laps, 136 laps complete. At 134, they were running as follows, Labonte leading with Rusty Wallace, then in second. He's had a second place this year, now working on a win. Davey Allison in third, Bill Elliott in fourth, and Kelly Arborough coming across in the fifth position. In the second six, Phil Parsons there and having a good afternoon of competition for Phil Parsons in car number 55, still looking for his first win, followed by Bobby Allison. Lake Speed, who is running a selected schedule, is right up in there. Buddy Baker and Dale Earnhardt round out the top 10 with this caution period that front grouping of 13 cars in the lead lap will all be bumper to bumper and with 136 laps complete now yes and i believe they will have to make one more pit stop ken before they going to get real interesting race. from here on in as they group the front of the field get set for a go once again we'll be back for the green flag moment to warwick hills country club in michigan we are now at lap 137 137 of 188 complete. Field is under caution. It's been an extended stay. They've had a couple of trucks out here working the first and second turn area of this 2.6 mile track. And let's go to Chris Economaki on the heat story right now. Right, well, the burning sun here is worrying the crew chiefs that it's making parts of the asphalt road soft. And what that means is when the asphalt is soft and a car takes off from the pits and it hits a hard spot, it can break an axle. And that's the prime concern of some of the crew chiefs here. This southern sun is really burning down on the asphalt pit road today. Back to you, Ken. Let's go right to Mike Joy. Well, Mr. Harold Parsons in Michigan, I've got your sons alongside. Hadn't planned it this way. You're here a little early, Benny. Yeah, I saw Phil coasting out on the inside, and I said, boy, tough break. He's had a problem. And about that time, I said, whoops, I got a problem, a big one. And it was something in the engine let go. Uh, unexpected, but thank goodness I was able to keep the car going straight, because any time that happens, you have visions of backing in the fence. Is the smaller carburetor straining these engines more? No, I don't think so. Uh, as a matter of fact, it ought to be easier on the engines, because we're turning them absolutely 500 RPMs less than we did when we were down here in May. Yeah. And Phil Parsons, what are you doing here? Well, as Benny said, uh, we, the car was really running great. I just, first of all, I'd like to thank the entire Skull Classic Oldsmobile racing team. They did a great job. We had a good car today. We had a chance to win the race, but uh, some let go on the engine coming off, too, and I just coasted to the side, and here I am. Well, unlike his older brother, who's headed for the airport, Phil still gets to drive 500 miles today. Home. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mike. 50 laps to go here, and the attrition now stands at 11 cars out. The Parsons brothers, both in the 130 lap. 33rd lap succumbing to engine problems. Mark Stahl is out. Harry Gant is retired with a blown engine. Jeff Swindell, I believe we've brought you up to date several times on those other competitors who are down, and we'll do it again before we finish the afternoon. As we go back to green, 
with 138 of the 188 laps in the book. Terry Labonte is in first, Rusty Wallace second, Davey Allison third, Buddy Baker fourth, Bobby Allison fifth, Lake Speed in sixth, Kelly Arborough seventh, Dale Earnhardt eighth, Tim Richmond is ninth, Darrell Waltrip is in tenth, and Schrader is in eleventh position, while twelfth is being held by Bill Elliott, and I believe those are the cars, and thirteenth is Kyle Petty. Those are the thirteen cars in the lead lap, and again, if you're new to motorsports, those on the outside in that Row of two are the cars in the lead lap. The cars on the inside are a lap or more down. That's exactly the way they line up for the restart, and they're about ready to crank them up again. Again, with 49 laps to go as they come across to get the green flag. I don't think there's anyone to go that far, even though Davey Allison and Bill Elliott went 46 laps, and they've been in and kept those fuel tanks off to the utmost. Bodine, that number five car in 14th place, is one lap down. He'd like to get it back right here. Jeff Bodine with the Gary Nelson prepared cars they come to the